hello uh, it's Marilo back with a braids tutorial now drawing hair is always going to be difficult so we're going to try to squeeze these 12 hours of drawing footage into a short tutorial for you now here are the braids before and this is the final result so follow along and hopefully this will help so these are the tools that I'm using for this portrait. Now I did not use the 0.3 which is these red ones. I did not use much of these pencils. This one is a HB lead and this one is a 4H lead and really I just wanted it for the, the, the tidiness of the point. I didn't use it for any other real reason. I would have preferred if it was actually darker um, but it did help with some of the detail. The other mechanical, this is a 0.3, this is a 0.3. Now this one here is a 0.5 and I've got a 2B lead in that pencil. So instead of using a normal 2B pencil, I changed it to this one. Um, and here are my mono zeros. Now this one I use the most. Here you can see how the colors all come off of there. That's because I use it so much. I just rub the top of it on my sandpaper that I've got sellotaped to my desk and that sharpens the top um, when I'm drawing. Also, I've got my black polychromos Faber-Castell pencil um, it's a polychromos color pencil and I absolutely love it I use it if I'm not using pastel then that's the black pencil that I'm using always um, and I've got a 2H Derwent pencil here um, also a cotton bud Johnson's cotton bud all day all day and my really dirty um, but I really like the thin one it's falling apart but this is my blending stump which I absolutely love um, when I'm working my hands are usually covered in pencil from sharpening that's why it's that color but never mind I've got loads of them but I just really like that thin one so I tend to use the really thin one or the really thick one um, not really in between but those are the tools that I've used for this portrait and we're gonna get started with this tutorial to my head here bottom of my head about here and then the braids come down. So yeah, I think it's gonna be better if I draw the face. But then she's got um, like a part in here. So from that part in, I could start by drawing the, the triangles. So I wanted to show you that little snippet quickly, just to show you from my vlog, how I got a bit of a guideline going and um, managed to freehand this drawing, which I didn't think I was capable of doing. So I'm very proud of myself, but I don't expect everybody to outline it, uh, freehand the drawing. I do not expect everyone to do that. And I do advise, if you're not comfortable or confident in, in freehanding something as, as complicated as this, um, you can go ahead and grid an image online. So go to any website online that will grid an image for you. You can upload your own image and grid it and you should be able to make the, sp the squares as spacious as you like. So um, go ahead and do that. Now, I really wanted to show you this part of the braids because a lot of people do find drawing braids difficult. And I know it can be complicated, especially if we complicate it more in our mind. But actually it's a very, very simple process, but I just wanted to point out to you, I really did pay attention to the direction of the braids. If you notice that this braid is leaning to one side as it goes down slightly, that will help with the realism. Now it's important not to get lost when you're drawing the actual braid. I think we do complicate it a lot in our minds. If you actually look at the actual pattern that I'm doing, it's very repetitive. Um, just here you can see that I'm drawing half of the braid and I'm giving the illusion that the rest of it is underneath the plaque that is above it. So um, it's, it's paying attention to little details like that. It's very important. I noticed that when people are new to drawing, they tend to, you know, draw everything in sight, even things that are in shadow. They tend to, you know, try and imagine what it would look like in the light. And um, this is what kind of goes against the realism. I, I'm very very religious when it comes to drawing I like to draw things exactly as I see them and um, like I say I didn't aim to be a realistic artist I just really liked copying everything that I saw and then obviously realism came because if you copy what you see then you're more than likely going to get a realistic result it's when we start to take shortcuts or change things that tends to be when we make the mistakes or it doesn't look quite right and to let you in on a little secret here, those bottom braids, I completely ruined them. <laughs> I completely ruined them. I had to redo them again later. So my advice as well is if you get tired, stop, take a break. 
it's not till the next day. Give yourself and your mind and your eyes a rest because you will make mistakes. So you're going to see here that I did the roots of the hair before. Um, I really was paying attention to what direction they were going in, but as you can see, it's not very neat. It was very scratchy, very sketchy. So it's time now to just go over them and try to tidy them up a bit. Um, the most important part here is probably getting the darker areas, but remembering to try and leave some sort of guide so that you know where your highlights are. Um, I'm constantly paying attention to the reference picture. So when you're drawing the roots of the hair, please, please, please make sure that you're going in the right direction um, to show the flow of the hair, what direction it's pulled in. This is very important. So make sure that you go all the way over the hair. I did not rush this. This probably took me maybe 20 minutes to do the whole of the scalp, uh, maybe less because it does look very sketchy. When I first started this portrait, the aim was to do a uh, more of a relaxed sketch, which actually turned out pretty good. So it was nice change not to be being over the top about details from the very beginning. Um, as you can see, I was being very scratchy, but I did have to go over and over this uh, to try and make those roots look a little bit more realistic. So the next step I took to try and help with the realism was to go over all of the roots of the hair with a blending stump. Now, I was paying attention to the direction of the hair, but I was also paying a lot more attention to the kind of, um, the where it fades out. You'll notice that very much of the dark, most of the darker areas are closer to the, the actual root of the plait. So the hairs around it tend to fade out in color so um, the tone had lightened up a bit so I was making sure that I wasn't crossing over the uh, parting lines but I was also trying to kind of blend out the lines that I'd done already um, I will use the eraser after this to recreate the highlights but this was just to kind of add a layer of um, of a more of a lighter gray tone just to show that the hair is more softer at the root um, as you could see that I did it really really rough before just throw down some pencils so if you would like to follow this process go ahead or you could just do it the, the other way and just be really really more detailed when you're starting with the roots but I find that everything that I do with drawing I have to layer and layer and layer so this is just part of my process and not wanting to miss anything out here. I want to make sure I show you everything in as quick a time as I can. Um, I did go over it just to darken the roots a little bit and the actual partings with the cotton bud and it's just amazing for blending. I did use that on the roots a lot. Now this is where the 0.3 mechanical pencils came in handy because obviously at the roots of the hair where it faded out as you go out towards the partings that was where the hair was at its thinnest and that was where you could see the individual hairs and the scalp. So it was important to use the thinnest lead I could to make sure I could recreate those little thin hairs um, closer to the pines. So I made sure that I did all of the pines. I, I don't leave any out, I don't go bit by bit. Um, I did when I went to the braids but when it came to the, the partings on the top of the head, I wanted to make sure I did every single part equally because like I said, I was layering and I don't want to miss a layer anywhere uh, because it will show at the end. With the baby hairs, it's important not to go too, too, too hard with the pencil. Remember to lay down your darker areas first and then you're able to blend to make a lighter tone and then you can add the highlight with an eraser, especially the Mono Zero eraser, which I live by. Um, this pencil was brilliant for this stage, but I also was still being quite rough. As you can see, it's not perfect yet. I've got a lighter version of this pencil and I was going to go over it later with that pencil as well to get some lighter hairs in there. Um, also went with the black pencil when I go in with the black pencil will make it more realistic. So keeping all of this in mind, I was still just kind of feeling my way around the portrait. And then as I said, Mono Zero Eraser, I love you. I couldn't live without you. <laughs> I'm just going over it now with the Mono Zero razor, nice and sharp. Don't forget to get some sandpaper. I use fine sandpaper. I've sellotaped some to my desk. Well, I've actually duct taped it. But you can just um, rub your rubber against it and it will sharpen the edges. So I do it so that it's horizontal, the pencil's horizontal, and it gives me a perfect sharp edge so that I can twist the pencil around as I'm going uh, to make it last as long as I can. But I'm telling you, this pencil, if you're an artist, or you want to be an artist or you enjoy drawing this is something you have to get your hands on it's a mono zero eraser by the brand named tombo so here i go with the lighter version of the 0.3 mechanical pencil the other lead was a hb now with this pencil 
you can tell I know which one's different because I've taken the end off of this one, so I know this is the lightest one. But this pencil is a 4H pencil. So obviously I'm gonna get a lighter tone when I lay down these little little lines. Now look at the direction that I'm going in. Always pay attention to the direction that you're going in when you're drawing hair. It's very important to get the flow of the hair, whether the hair's pulled tight or whether the hair's out loose. Very, very important. So at this point I decided that I was going to leave the roots because I could have been going over and over and over them. I'm happy to go back to them later. So what I did was I started with the 0.5 mechanical pencil. This has a 2B lead inside of it and this just makes life a lot easier because I don't have to sharpen it. I can just push the end and some more pops out. But I decided to darken some of the roots while going in with the plaits. Now, um, here I was early into the plaits, so I was paying attention more to where the darker area was until I realised that actually they're going to be blackened out afterwards and I can just go more confidently with the pencil around the edges of the plait. And just to get my guidelines, because obviously you're not going to be able to see all of those lines once I add the um, direction of the hair flow. So, and darken in certain areas just to get my guide. Um, I really wanted to start with this pencil. I think with the rest of the portrait, I don't think I used this pencil. I think I jumped straight in with the black pencil in certain areas, but um, certain plaits in certain areas were darker than others. Going over all of the braids here, I noticed that there was a pattern beginning to happen. Um, what I was doing was just blackening out with the 2B pencil, all the areas that were gonna be really dark. And then I was trying to get the flow of the hairs with this pencil. Now that's where you can see I'm going a little bit lightly now. I always start from each corner from the top and bottom part of the loop of the braid. Now, as you can see, there's just brushing, just brushing out little lines of pencil and fading out as you go. It's good to practice this on a bit of paper first. Um, kind of get into the flow of it. You need to have, um, maybe I need to show you real speed. Let me show you some real speed. What you're going to notice is that I'm not going back and forth. I've slowed it down a bit because before it looked as though I was doing it back and forth, back and forth. I really wasn't. I was doing little strokes going upwards and then little strokes going downwards. So I was being really careful not to go too dark at the edges, just to fade it out with each stroke. And I say this is the part of the portrait where things started to get exciting and the actual portrait started to come to life. Now, I've just got a thing for the black pencil. This is what gives all depth. All realism, I just could not draw a portrait without it. And it frustrates me when I see people's portraits and it's perfect, except for the fact that it just needs a little bit of black here and there. So um, here I go with a nice, sharp, polychromized pencil at real speed. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna speed it up a bit now so you can actually see what's going on. So I'm gonna show you a section of this drawing now. Um, paying attention to this part now. Each part, every single braid and the root of each braid is exactly the same. It's exactly the same process. So I'm just gonna show you this section here and you'll be able to see the portrait come to life. So I'm hoping that when you do draw your braids, depending on what color the braids are and whatnot and what type of reference you have, um, but if you're dealing with anything similar to what I was drawing, um, definitely pull out that black pencil and watch things come to life. So what I've done is I've added the darker parts of the root of the plait. And then I'll jump straight onto the top of that braid there. Now, and you can already see what kind of position I'd laid out with the lines. So what I'm doing now is just paying close attention to the darkest parts of that braid. It's very important to get some sort of highlight on each loop of the braid. So um, I'm really darkening the, the areas that I could see that were the darkest to make sure that I can really create that realism. Now you can see that in the middle where I left it open, it kind of already looks like a highlight. So here I've darkened around every loop of this braid again and I've sharpened the pencil of course which I did a lot while doing this portrait. You can actually see my hands quite dirty again. It always gets dirty when I'm using black pencil because I'm always sharpening it. But the good thing is the polychromos is still quite hard. It does have like a stronghold. So you're able to, I find it better than um, Prisma Colour because Prisma Colour tends to be a little bit more sticky, a little bit more softer, and I prefer the Polychromos pencils. They're absolutely brilliant. And they seem to be better quality, and they really hold their sharpen. But again, with a portrait like this, you're gonna keep sharpening it no matter what. Um, I also rub it on the sandpaper next to me on the desk, uh, which tends to help a lot as well. And once again here, I'm just gonna show you how I draw this little part of this braid. Um, it's important to separate with the darkest part. So usually around the lines, there's a darker part, a darker area, uh, some depth in the middle, just to show there's an indent where it's going inwards. So I've darkened in between the crack and then I'm going to just create those lines. Um, you can see that it's almost 
realistic already. Now I'm paying attention to it, looking at it now, thinking I'm gonna need to go over that with a um, blending stump or something to kind of soften it out. But so far, so good. So once again, I'm going over the root uh, with a sharp <laughs> polychromous pencil, uh, just tidying it up, getting some more defined um, lines, just little lines here and there, darkening certain parts as well. Um, it's quite hard to explain. Um, I'm hoping that visually this is helping. I've had to speed it up because things really do go slow and you get pretty bored just sitting there watching the, pro the actual real process. So exactly the same process again, darkening around the, the braid and actually getting a guideline for the loops of the braid. Also using the sharpest edge of the pencil that I can and trying to recreate the darkened areas, uh, the darkest parts of the hair at the root. So really just going over and over in the same, um, the same repetitive actions. Um, you're gonna find that once I start outlining the whole braid, then I'm gonna go straight in with the little streaks and lines within the braid. So it's all about just trying to create a realistic um, highlight in each braid. And don't forget, when you get to certain areas of certain braids, you're gonna have certain parts that are just blacked out or in shadow. So don't forget to add all the shadow that you come across. This was really important with this portrait. Even when I thought I was finished, I actually noticed that I'd left out one of the shadows. So remember to go over and add shadow wherever it's needed. And pay close attention to the actual pattern of the braid. It's not always gonna be exactly the same. I noticed when I was going over with the black pencil, I was being a little bit more careful because looking at it, one, it was hard to really see because it was very dark and very darker in certain areas. And it was really hard to separate and actually see which part was blacked out and which part had any kind of highlight. Um, even just a very, very slight lighter black tone. Um, so here you'll notice that I'm going over certain shadowed areas again, because I'm really trying to make sure they're properly blacked out and then of course it's the one of the most important parts which is remembering to leave that highlight that gap on each braid loop that you see some form of highlight and you're going to notice here that I was being a lot more confident with the black pencil whereas before I was going over it with the 2B mechanical just to make sure that I laid down some sort of grey tone and it was really to affect the highlight. I wanted to make sure there were some sort of lines down. I was a little bit too scared to go in with the black pencil but now uh, looking at you know obviously how much drawing I got done at that point I was a lot more confident with the black pencil and as long as it's sharp I'll be able to create that highlight. The black pencil means final. It's very important to get it right. You can and not erase the black pencil if it's outside. I mean, if it was inside where there's a lot of shadow and whatnot, but on the outside there, where I'm doing it, like, mm -mm, mm -mm. you cannot erase from there. Once you make the mistake, it's there and it's staying there. As you can see, I'm just repeating the same thing. We go down to the next braid, we add some of the darker hairs going around the root of the plait, and then we jump in with outlining the loops of the plait, and then we start going in with the strokes and trying to create a few little lines within the loop of the plait and also leaving a highlight. So it's the same pattern over and over, which did get a little bit draining, but it was worth it in the end. Um, it's also a little bit therapeutic, so it's not all bad, but I really, really enjoyed drawing this. I'm gonna skip now forward because I I feel like I've given you a view of what uh, the process was going all the way across all of these braids. So at this point I jumped in with my 2B 0.5 mechanical pencil and I started going around the hair strokes, uh, the roots of the hair should I say, to create the darkest areas. Now obviously the 2B is darker than the HB mechanical I was using before. So I found it was important to just go around, get my guide for the darkest parts of this part of the, of the hair and then I was gonna jump in with the braids. It was important at this point, realizing how much work I have ahead to just kind of jump in with some more tones, more darker tones and get a guide going so that I can jump straight into these braids. So before I jump into the braids, I really wanted to make sure I added that black. So I'm gonna go over all of the roots and just add that black so I can get a guide and just feel a little bit more comfortable about jumping in onto the braids. I didn't want all of the roots to look really, really plain. Um, I wanted to start drawing the plaits um, and also know that there was some black laid down already, otherwise it would have just looked weird to me. So that was the reason why I did this. You can do it later if you want to, but afterwards you're gonna, your hand's gonna be going across the braids and it may smudge. So yeah, I just thought I'd add that black. 
So here I decided to start out with the 2B pencil as I had on the ones above. Um, later on I think I gave up on that whole process because it was longer um, and it really wasn't necessary. I was able to fade out with the black pencil alone but to start off with I did start out with the 2B pencil laying down some grey tones in, in between leaving gaps so that there's some sort of highlight. So if you want to do that it's a process that might make it a little bit easier if you're worried that you might go too heavy with the black pencil. So at this point I was just going down, uh, working my way down with the black pencil. Also you'll notice that as I'm drawing the braid, I'm now really paying attention to the reference. I keep looking back at the reference, I'm following everything that I'm seeing on the reference and I'm really being careful with that black pencil at first. Um, you have to get into the swing of things. Later on in the braids I got a lot more confident and I felt a lot more sure of what I was doing but at this point I was just trying to be careful so I was outlining here very delicately. I wasn't pushing down with the black pencil. I was trying to keep this braid pretty light. Um, this was all because really I, it was the first braid that I'd really drawn in one long row so I was being very careful here. So as I work my way down you'll see me going over and over just to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic so I'm trying to kind of spread out where I've put those blunt lines in the corners with the black I'm just laying down the black in the heaviest parts and then after that I was trying to with a sharp pencil trying to find those little lines, those little lines that you're gonna see in each loop of the braid. So I know it's annoying and there really aren't any shortcuts if you're drawing realism. You have to try to draw everything that you see. But um, obviously we're not drawing every single individual hair, so it is technically a shortcut. But um, it's gonna be a lot of work. So if you're gonna draw braids in detail, it's gonna be a lot of work. So if you're preparing yourself for that, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise or a shock to the system. <laughs> So with the next braid you can see that I'd already laid down some of the 2B pencils so I was already trying to work out some sort of system because when you've got a lot of repetitive drawing to do you tend to try and find a shortcut so I was laying down that 2B because I really wasn't sure at that point whether the 2B was that important. Um, I think it really did help. Um, looking at it now you can see the slight faint lines underneath, it's a different tone of grey um, rather than trying to create the grey with the black using a lighter um, pressure so I'm glad that I did but at the same time later on it really didn't matter I just jumped in with the black pencil but I'm glad that I did that so as you can see the system has begun I'm darkening the corners and I'm going around and just adding it's very important once you add all of the darkest areas try not to go to to get too carried away make sure you add the darkest areas that you can see after that it's easy peasy you just start brushing little lines outwards um, and leaving little gaps in between so that there's some form of highlight so when you simply if in your mind it should become easier but again like I say practice is what makes perfect so here you're gonna see that I was just throwing down that 2B pencil very roughly just getting a, a, the direction of the braid really because I know that once I add the black pencil that those gray areas are gonna seem very light so it's still gonna be part of the highlight now jumping in with the black pencil the same same repetitive behavior just going over and over adding the black pencil so i'm going to skip now and i'm going to show you how we got further down the braids starting again with the same action i'm starting with the set the, the third row um, making sure that you add the darker areas to the root of the braid and then obviously we're going to jump in with the braid but i was doing this in sections because of when i was recording it was where the camera was facing so i was just working my way down uh, it's hard to concentrate on drawing as well as changing the camera angle so um I just wanted to do it in separate parts. Now, obviously here I'm jumping in with the braid before I've even done the root of the plait. This is where you know I'm just in the zone, okay? When I'm drawing like that, I'm just in the drawing zone. So I wasn't even thinking about that root. I can come back to that later. Now there's one thing that I definitely found complicated and that was trying to remember where the shadowed area was. Now you can see there, there's a shadowed area going down that braid just next to my hand. Um, that was very hard to remember. Uh, I actually left out one of them and had to go back later on. So now you can see I'm just jumping in with the black pencil, just going all the way around, just, just, just outlining plaits everywhere that I can see them. <laughs> and also darkening the roots. This was all like, all just like zone drawing. I think I did this in one day. I did most of this drawing in one day. So we're just going over those braids, darkening, make sure you leave a highlight. You can see I'm very confident at this point, making sure that I'm leaving those highlights and I've got the darkest area laid down first. Once I've done that, I'm free to just add those lines. Um, I know that if there's any issue, I can even go back and also use the eraser if need be. Um, so I'm just really confident in the zone at this point. I, again, was leaving out the shadows. Um, 
here we go I'm just starting to draw a shadow here uh, I, I honestly don't know how I was missing them but I realized all of a sudden I could see way too much scalp where are the shadows and then I started looking at the image just purely looking at the shadows um, and then I started to add all of those so just darkening certain areas really paying attention to the reference to see where all the shadows are darkening in between the plaits but make sure you're only darkening the parts that are blacked out or darkened i'm also aware that i'm gonna have to go over some of those braids and kind of blend that shadow into the inside of the loop of the braid so it all just looks really kind of stagnant now you can just see the the, the braid going over the top so i'm gonna have to go over it and kind of tidy that up but it's all part of the process i'm just there we go i'm just kind of blending it in a bit now down to the shape of the braids as the braids were kind of you know flopping across the, the lady's shoulder you could see the shape of them had changed you could see the position of them had changed and as soon as i realized that going in with the black pencil again i've been drawing for a long time at this point so i was pretty confident but um be careful going in with a black pencil use a darker b um pencil if you're if you want if you're worried that you might make a mistake my thing was to just go down and pay attention do not just you know it's so tempting to just start following a pattern but just marie pay attention make sure you do not make a black line that is a mistake there's nothing you can do after that so um i was really paying attention to the positioning of the braid and because i've been like speed drawing for how long at this point i was very very happy to go in with the black pencil but i do advise use a b grade pencil if you're worried that you might make a mistake so you can see the shape of them they're more rounded they're um they're more chubby uh the braid loop has just changed the shape of it has changed as this one goes down as well um specifically you're going to see that it not only gets smaller but the positioning of it of each loop just completely changes and then we come to blacking out the darkest areas i love to do this because i find that it gives me a great guide uh, when i'm drawing it's just like when you lay down your outline it's very important to have a guide and when i lay down the darkest areas it tends to kind of set out the picture for me um, then i kind of know where i need to go in um, around the darker areas and then the highlights begin to create themselves so now I really want to show you how I created the effect of the darkest, darkest braids. Now, even though I was drawing these braids and I still had to keep some form of highlight there, I don't be afraid to go in with the black. That's the one thing that I find uh, when I see artists work, it's, it's almost intimidating. I've had people message me and say, you know, do a video on dark skin or do a video on doing, you know, areas really dark. Um, people are just afraid to go in with the black, which I understand because that's where you can start making mistakes. But I knew in this area that I had to go very, very heavy and really pay attention again it comes down to the need to draw things that aren't even there do not allow your brain to do it with this realism drawing it's very much about your mind state and where what you're looking at um, and how you're seeing it you need to start looking at the portrait as different tones rather than seeing it as a braid so at this point of the portrait i'm going to take some clips here and just show you how heavy-handed i was with the black pencil and i want to show you how effective that can be so i know a lot of people contact me and say that they they either use too much black or um, how do i get the the darker skin tones or whatever and um i just want to show you how i mean i i don't allow the black pencil to intimidate me whatsoever um, I actually love going in with the black it brings everything to life so it's all about creating that depth and I still when I look at this portrait that's what I see I straight away my eyes are drawn to this part of the portrait where everything kind of got blacked out and it makes the, the slight highlight shine even more and it just brings it to life in my eyes now I'm just going over it with the black pencil looking at the reference picture always paying attention to the reference and just making sure all the parts that are supposed to be dark as possible really are so now we're going to get to the part that I've dreaded the reason I dreaded it was because when I outlined it I was very drained at this point and I just got all of the dimensions wrong everything all the proportions some plaits were supposed to be bigger than others and I didn't get the darkened areas they're all kind of squashed together it was just wrong in too many ways so here what I tried to do was just get some sort of guide. I wanted to make sure I had the bigger plaits large, the smaller plaits small, the ones that are supposed to be behind, behind, and again, the ones in front. And also, um, adding those black areas, making sure, I find it really difficult to find space for the darkened areas, the gaps, um, but I did in the end, I worked it out. But it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of use of the eraser. But um, now the main goal at this point, after going over it with a pencil, just to get that gray in, was to basically darken the whole thing. It was really the same process as the rest of the drawing. You can see I used the 0.3 there. 
and just going over it with the black pencil, just tidying things up really. Uh, at this point of the portrait, it was just trying to get it done. So I really want to take this opportunity to thank you guys. I really do appreciate the support that I've gained on, on YouTube from all of my subscribers and whatnot. And I'd like to thank you if you are subscribed. If you're not, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see more videos, do click that black bell so you'll be notified whenever I do upload. And I'm trying to get more content out. So I've started a vlog. Um, it's going to be like every other day or every few days. And it's going to be uploaded onto my Patreon page. So if you're interested in joining, go on over to my Patreon. You get to see a little bit more behind the scenes of the artwork and the daily drawing. But thank you guys for your support. I really appreciate it and I'm going to get to work on the next piece of art. And please, please, please don't forget to like this video because I've found out that it actually really helps people on YouTube when the video gets liked. So thank you again and I'll see you with the next piece soon. Look at how far we came.